Fraud is a growing concern for government agencies at all levels, from fake accounts to synthetic identities, Criminals constantly develop new ways to exploit vulnerabilities. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and joining us today to talk about fighting fraud with modern identity verification are Ajay Gupta, Chief Digital Transformation Officer for the State of California's Department of Motor Vehicles, and Matthew Thompson, Senior Vice President and GM for Public Sector at SoCure. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. And Ajay, let's get the conversation started with you. You know, I think we'd agree we're seeing a rise in things like synthetic identities and third-party identity fraud. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what you're seeing in the way of these trends and how they're specifically challenging government agencies. Right, thanks for having me. So yeah, it's definitely a growing concern. And as the largest uh, state identity issuer with over 30 mil 31 million unique identities that we uh, we own, uh, and manage for state of California, uh, it's really a big concern. We are often the beginning or the start of this cycle, this fraud cycle as well, and uh, often has to manage this for uh, our residents, for our businesses, and even our other state partners, other departments and commercial entities too. So it's a pretty big concern for us. Um, in in terms of the, you know, the trends that are out there, it's, quite pervasive as I'm sure uh, Matthew Thompson would, would talk some more about as well. The uh, There is from public sector standpoint, there's uh, during COVID, as you all are aware, there was rather large unemployment fraud that was pretty much originating from our lack of ability to really uh, confirm the identity. So there's a lot of fraud in the mix. Uh, there is welfare benefits that continues to you know happen over time. California ranks fifth highest in the nation for mortgage fraud uh, mm -hmm. at this point in time. There is uh, financial, you know, globally for our banks, uh, nationally as well. Uh, there is 84% increase in fraud between 2021 and 2022. That's, you know, crazy. I think there is a lot of digital data available, you know, for uh, to be able to create these, uh, what we would call as fabricated synthetic identities. Where And also with the advent of AI, uh, since we are in this weird world of old and new where we are doing a lot of online transactions and still expecting a di digital copy of a physical ID and then validate using that. So all some of those weaker practices have resulted in, uh, you know, fraud across the industry, you know, public sector, financial sector, uh, and some of the practices which were previously working well, like knowledge-based authentication is not really the answer anymore. So some of that has resulted in a whole lot of uh, fraud across the various industries. And that poses a challenge for us because at a macroeconomic level, it is costing the state. Even at the microeconomic level, it's costing our residents, our businesses, and even public sector, as I mentioned, when we, when we uh, provide services to our customers who need it uh, and are entitled to it versus, you know, the people who eventually end up getting it who have, you know, a fraud, uh, fraudulent identity associated with it. I would say, um, you know, government has always inherently have has had an issue with identity fraud. It's always been um, kind of uh, a part of the process uh, that's happened. But since, you know, five, 10 years ago, um, the majority of those processes were in person or paper based. They weren't really easy to scale. Um, you know, they had to be done in a brick and mortar there was certainly still fraud happening in those brick and mortar processes and the paper-based processes, but through COVID and with a lot of government um, and certainly California DMV being one leading the way in terms of digital transformation, um, they need to rethink their approach to establishing identity trust because it is much harder to do online and through multiple digital channels. Um, and it's much easier for fraudsters to uh, attack these systems and do it in a scaled fashion where, you know, we saw that kind of front and center during the pandemic, but, you know, the same kinds of fraud that have been attacking the financial system, which has been doing digital for much longer than government, has been seeing these massive scaled attacks for a long time and dealing with them with sophisticated tools like SoCures. Government is just now trying to catch up and put the, you know, the right types of controls and, and tools in place to help prevent against this same kind of sophisticated identity fraud. 
And then Ajay, back to you. So, you know, with these evolving threats, um, there clearly is a growing need for modern identity proofing, uh, along with better use of data and threat intelligence sharing. Can you just briefly tell us what you're trying to accomplish or what you're uh, trying to implement uh, in California around identity proofing? Yeah, I think the why that motivation is extremely important uh, for us to understand, right? That's that's the only way we can react to it. So uh, number one is, you know, we are very passionate in public sector about the equity. Now, threat actors are not equitable. They would, uh, you know, hit anybody who's vulnerable. And unfortunately, our aging population, um, our underserved population is most impacted by it. They are the ones who are not fully equipped with the know-how to be able to tackle some of these things at a personal level. And they are the ones who are denied services because somebody else has actually stolen their identity. And that's unfortunately hurting that particular population quite a bit. Now, with the advent of interstate commerce, you know, that's growing and, um, and also online services that are being provided, while these businesses are, you know, banking on some of the traditional means, the fraudsters have moved on, right? Some of the traditional means around a copy of a physical identity and just doing knowledge-based checks around, you know, what they know. All of those things are really available in the dark web today easily. So it's pretty easy for fraudsters to uh, really attack um, in terms of uh, stealing the identity and stealing the uh, services um, and, and causing uh, issues. And then there is also geographical weaknesses. One certain geographic state departments or a particular state may have weakness uh, and vulnerabilities in terms of issuing identities. And that carries over to other uh, states as well. And that's pro problematic as well. The the weaker practices, the misuse of data, you know, that's available on the dark web, the the just the the traditional way of kind of verifying things is all resulting in um, uh, problems, especially for these underserved communities. From my vantage point, and that's critical for us to take action on. And Matthew, yeah, I mean, Ajay is obviously um, a subject matter expert in this area around identity. Um, given that he, you know, he, he does what he does with the California DMV, but for other government leaders that are watching this that may not have as much experience as a J, I, I just want to emphasize something and say it in a little bit of a different way in that when you're designing identity solutions or thinking about the role of digital identity in your digital government experience, you, you, you need to start with the starting point that, um, fraudsters have the same data as the good person that's that's applying for a benefit. So it's not enough to just assume that secrets are secret or that um, PII actually belongs to the individual. I think uh, what I hear people that aren't as informed as a J um, say in this space is, well, I have the data. Well, just having the data is not enough because so do the bad guys. And, um, and, and that's why adding layered fraud controls on top of your identity proofing process is so critical today for government so that they're not susceptible to these types of fraud attacks. That's the other thing I would add, the other thing I would add is, and, and we see this in the data across government, what SoCure today is working with 29 state agencies and three federal agencies. And we see the same types of fraud attacks, meaning combinations of data, device, um, as Jay was saying with his 3Ds that, you know, are being reused over and over again. So fraudsters are literally taking the same fraudulent combination of data and trying to use it at California DMV, trying to use it at um, California EDD, trying to use it, you know, and they just keep trying to uh, find the holes or the chinks in the armor so that they can impersonate someone to get access into some agency's benefit or service. Um, and so, no one government agency should try to learn 100% of the fraud tactics, techniques, procedures on their own, and they shouldn't be trying to solve this problem in a vacuum because that's a losing strategy. Also a great point. So, Ashay, can you talk a little about some concrete examples of how modern identity verification platforms are uh, helping you and your department detect and deter fraud attempts? Yeah, so, you know, learning from what's been out there in the industry we often look at uh, the trends that are available. We have landed on this approach, which Matt and I have talked about in the past, which I call the D3 approach, where 
we want to uh, verify the data, the device, and the demographics. So verifying source corroborating the data, which is easy for a DMV to do, right? Because we have the source data, uh, assuming we did our job right, verifying the identity of the person when they showed up in the field office. Uh, but other entities also source corroborating with, uh, with entities like DMV, vital records, et cetera, verifying the device using modern technologies and using aggregator platforms um, like Secure, and then also verifying demographics. You know, once again, verifying who you are and what we know about that particular individual and are there any um, known vulnerability associated with uh, individual's demographic, whether it's the address or or the location or the identity itself is extremely critical. Uh, beyond that, what is also critical is, you know, we can get to all levels of security, but it needs to be convenient for the customer. So what's important for us is making sure that it's frictionless to the extent possible that the customer doesn't know the difference. That's where the magic lies in the new technologies there, that while you're doing reliable work, you're also still able to protect the customer from inconvenience, right? Uh, but also continuing to use technologies that are around, you know, today's like machine learning and, um, uh, and data analytics techniques um, and reconciliation processes in place to still look for data in the historical, um, uh, you know, what, what we already have. So those are extremely critical pieces and parts that we continue to look at and evolve our, our uh, posture around uh, identity verification, but also ongoing identity uh, uh, fraud markers uh, in our systems. And then uh, <clears throat> Matthew, can you share any additional examples where you're seeing that, you know, uh, state and federal CIOs and CISOs can look to that are kind of making good use of this kind of technology? I, again, I um and and I spent time um in one of the largest financial institutions in the on the identity team. Um, I, I think government should really look to best practices from financial services, especially the largest banks in the country who have been dealing with very sophisticated fraud at scale for a long time, as well as um, are hyper focused on customer experience. Because uh, to Jay's point. Modern identity solutions can balance those two things very well, meaning not everybody that is trying to set up a digital account with the DMV should receive friction because the majority of those people are actually good. And so, you know, a modern identity solution will apply purposeful friction, as we like to say, where, you know, we see an outsized amount of fraud risk associated with the transaction, um, then we will apply friction there instead of 100% of the people who go through have to scan a, the front and back of their driver's license. That's not modern. That's not modern at all. You can go and open uh, a credit card line at any of the major financial institutions for tens of thousands of dollars if you qualify. You won't ever have to pull out a government-issued ID uh, to get through that process. And, and there are a few programs in government that are offering that same kind of financial benefit, if you will, that fraudsters would be trying to attack. So we we need to uh, we need to look to solutions that that both balance um, and apply purposeful friction and um, maximize the customer experience for the good people that are trying to access these services. I think on top of that, you know what what we consider and see as modern um, is is really um, a human understandable explanation of why um, an identity transaction is being marked as good versus fraudulent, and and to be able to empower the government uh, leaders who are using these programs and needing to rely on identity trust to be able to see that on a on a transaction by transaction basis and understand why someone is being you know considered good versus potential fraudulent because they have to answer to people as well. A J has to answer to you know for for constituents that say, well, no, that was actually me trying to apply. And modern fraud tools give him an understanding of why somebody is being you know, um, approved versus declined for fraud risk. Those are some great points. Well, finally, gentlemen, um, what recommendations would you uh, offer government IT leaders on, you know, how they can leverage these modern identity platforms to fight fraud even more effectively? Uh, Jay, maybe you could start with that and we'll wrap up with Matthew. So understanding the options, right? Whether it's the options related to use of uh, third-party uh, aggregators, to be able to verify the identity using decentralized identity solutions like the recent mo uh, advent of mobile driver license um, 
uh, and digital credentials. Uh, understanding privacy laws and the cost of fraud, both micro and macroeconomic level. There is uh, reports available from FTC around, okay, what's the, it's about $600 median loss per incident, right? For the constituents and for uh, everybody involved. Uh, so that's one example. And then there is other data available at ID Theft Center, which talks about how much loss of employment, what does it cost, right? At the social, socioeconomic level, physical, emotional, and financial impacts to it. For IT leaders, this is important because then you can justify the cost of making sure that you can strengthen your uh, identity verification posture, your security postures, et cetera. Share what you know across the state departments, across state boundaries is extremely critical because residents moved about, move about mm -hmm. and foster keep trying, right? Keep pinging. Understanding the trends via available tools, there is MITRE attack framework and others that are available already in the marketplace, which help you. And then obviously uh, entities, right? Aggregators like Secure, like Lexinex, Experian, et cetera, they kind of keep track of things. So listen to what's going on. Use cost reduction tactics like progressive profiling. So you're not like going all in per, you know, per transaction to be able to verify, yeah. but progressively increase the level as you need to. And also continue to periodically scan, looking for periodic, uh, you know, markers in your existing systems to be able to confirm that, yep, systems are still solid. People haven't gone in, whether it's internal or external actors and identity is still secure. Listen to your customers, right? They often tell you what's going on as well. So those are some of my advice to the IT leaders. I think, I think that was uh, terrific advice. And I'm going to say a lot of the same uh, because I, I think it is spot on, but I'm going to say it in a little bit different way. Um, kind of three main things that I would want federal um, IT leaders who are, are thinking about digital identity. Um, one is to think about it in terms of critical infrastructure. Digital identity is critical infrastructure for how you're enabling trust in your digital experiences and service delivery. So it is a, it's a critical role. Um, it is how you're securing the identities of your constituents, um, and and so like it needs to be treated that with that level of care. Um, second, you know, get educated uh, to what Ajay was saying. I think there's um, there's a lot of innovation happening in this space, which is necessary because of the pace of evolution of fraud um, and the demands of being able to improve customer experience across government, both of which play into how we're designing and, and innovating around digital identity. So get involved. And I would you know, emphasize um, the Identity Theft Resource Center, which Ajay mentioned as well. They have a lot of great resources there uh, that government leaders should go check out. Lastly, when you're evaluating these solutions, it's, it's imperative the government leaders run performance tests and make decisions based on data, results, results with their population, because everyone's population looks different. Every agency collects different information and has different success criteria. So um, work to define what the success criteria is and then performance test these solutions so that you understand what you're actually getting. I would have never bought an identity solution for Capital One uh, that did not go through rigorous testing uh, before we onboarded that vendor. And government needs to take that same approach instead of just buying off of people's marketing. Performance test, performance test, performance test. That's all. Thank you. So those are some great pieces of advice. Thank you so much. Uh, Ajay Gupta and Matthew Thompson, I really appreciate your taking a few minutes to share your perspective and your recommendations on ways to really use modern identity um, you know, management platforms to really uh, help um, to, you know, uh, protect against fraud in state and federal government organizations. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you.